So we've got our instance of our form entity model back from the database. And so let's think about what this page would look like. So this is a sort of a forum detail view or forum topic view. And each of those forums is going to have a number of different posts that we'd like to display on the page. So we've got now the forum entity model. So we can have things like the forum title, for instance, and the description and the, the picture. But now we need a way to sort of display the set of posts that correspond to that particular forum, right? So what we should do is go ahead and we're thinking about a variable like a post listings, which should be this uh, collection of um, posts that we'd like to display in some manner on the page. And so we're gonna fill this out here in just a minute, but we need a way to actually represent these post listings as a view model. So what we're gonna do is inside of our models directory here in our web project, I'm gonna collapse some things here to make it easier to read. Um, we need to create a new folder to store various types of post models. So we'll call this posts or just post. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a new item here and I'm gonna call it post listing model. Okay, and I created that as the wrong type here, so let's go ahead and uh, just rename this as post listing model .cs. This is a, this is a, a, a POCO class. All right, so go ahead and remove all of this. And I'm just gonna copy now that I kind of messed that up from forum here just to get the structure and we'll go back to have post listing model and paste this and the namespace is models.post and the class is post listing model okay and just clean up here a little bit and so post listing model will definitely have an ID It will have a title, so a post title. It will have some content. Um, but now if we think about the content here, maybe we don't actually need to implement this because of the fact that um, you know, we're not gonna display the post content actually on the uh, listing view, so we won't need to use that. We will make sure that the title is a string. And we'd like to display the author of the post and maybe the author's rating because we'll be implementing some type of rating system for our users. And I'll also put the author ID. And just to be clear here, we'll maybe say that this is the author name and the author rating will be an int. Author ID will be a, a string and we'll look at uh, the types of strings that actually identity generates for each of our users in a little while. And then maybe we have like the date posted we can represent that as a date time or a string here, just depending on where you'd like to, uh, how you'd like to build it in your controller. We'll just keep it as a string here. And then each post will also correspond to a particular forum. So we'll have a forum ID and then maybe like the forum image. And we will call it forum image URL and that'll be a string. And then the forum name. And maybe we'll also have one more property here called replies count. And we can kind of display how many replies this post has in our listing view. And then what I'd like to do is, so we know that the posts will have some uh, particular data related to the forum that they're on that we might want to display. So you can imagine on the listing view, you might have the post question and then you might have under it like a subtitle that says like posted in the C-sharp forum, for instance with a picture, maybe the icon of the C-sharp forum next to the post listing or something. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually now just bring in a forum listing model for each of the uh, post listing model instances that we have here. So I'll control create to bring this view model in. And so now we have an instance of a forum listing model corresponding to each of our post listings. 
Okay, and then maybe one more thing that we could have here is just an integer to represent the number of replies that a post has, which might be kind of useful in a post listing view. So I think that these properties will serve us well for now, and so we'll head over into our controller again, our forum controller. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and right click here and say close all but this so we can kind of clean up our workspace a little bit. And so now that we have some way to represent our collection of post listings, what I want to do is actually retrieve some posts from the database that correspond to this particular forum. And so I think for that, I'm going to assign the responsibility for retrieving those posts to the post service. And so we need to actually inject an instance of a post service that we need to create here now. So we'll store variable post here and kind of scaffold it out here because we'll have a private field post service that gets assigned the uh, particular instance of the service we'll, we'll use. And we'll have a method on it, I think, called get filtered posts. And we're going to pass that a forum ID. Um, which is just the ID that we passed the topic method here. So now we can actually build that out. So let's go to the top of our controller here. Go ahead and clean up the usings. And we'll create another read-only field here, iPost. And we'll call this post service. And so now we need to build this interface iPost in our data layer, just as we did for iForum. So we'll come down here. And in our data project, we'll go ahead and add a new item. We'll select interface, and we'll call it iPost. We'll go ahead and make this public, of course. OK, cool. So we can go ahead now and define the methods that we would want something like a post service to implement. So we'll have some very similar CRUD actions here that we saw also in our post or our forum interface. Um, at the very least, we'll have a post and we'll bring that in, uh, get by ID method. We'll have a collection of posts that we could return with a get all method. Maybe we'll have a collection of posts that we could return using some get filtered posts method. So this would correspond to like some search query that we might pass a method. And then we might have any number of tasks to say add a post to our database. And we'll control period to bring in threading. And then maybe we'll have a task to delete a post. And we can do that just by the ID and anything else that you might want to implement here. We could have a task to edit a post's content where we pass it the ID of the post and then the new content, something like that. And perhaps we'll have one more here to start with called add reply. And for this, we would pass it an actual instance of a new post reply object. So yeah, you may also even just have a reply service and a reply interface that implements something like add reply here. Um, for now, we'll just assign responsibility to that action to our post interface or any class that implements this post interface. Um, but again, as the application grows and you think about ways to actually restructure and maybe clean things up, create po proper separation of concerns, then maybe eventually you would have like a reply service as well. Okay, and I think that's all we'll need to implement for now. Again, this will grow as our application gets more complex. Uh, but for now, yeah, we have a nice uh, clean interface here that we can actually program against in a service. So now I'm going to go ahead and just make a quick commit. And I'll say add forum. Post models, post service. Okay. And what we'll do is in our service layer, we'll go ahead and now create our post service. So this should just be a plain C sharp class. And much like our forum service, we're going to 
calls our post service. Well, first of all, it will be public, and it's going to implement iPost now. So we'll control period to bring that in. And then we'll control period on the class name to implement the interface. And then we'll control period again to actually generate the constructor. Because if you recall, we need to pass our DB context to our post service here. And we can do that quite simply by, once again, signing a private read-only field for our application DB context and then assigning it here. So we'll pass application DB context to our post service. And we'll just go ahead and set that field here. And I'll just correct this typo. Okay. Okay, so now if we head back into our forum controller and we scroll down to the method we were working on, which was topic here, what I'd like to do is to now actually use this get filtered post method on our post service to filter our posts in this case by forum ID. And so maybe we'll actually rename this uh, rather than get filtered posts. Well, I'd like to use that for more of like a, a search type functionality. We'll call this get posts by forum and we'll pass it the ID here. So I can control period to actually generate that method in our interface. And if I hit F12 to go to it, you can see it here. And it brought it in as an object, but we know that this is going to be an enumerable set of posts. And we'll put this up next to get filtered posts. So yeah, we'll use get filtered post to return results from some potential search query in a little while. And we'll use this get post by forum and pass an ID for a forum in our controller um, to get a specific topic. And so let's go into our actual post service now. And so for that, we'll, we'll revisit the post service class. And notice that our interface will not be fully implemented now because we added the new method. So we'll control period and implement it. And then if we scroll down and simply look for it, in fact, I'm using Vim here. So I'm gonna set my scroll off to like nine lines so that we can scroll a little bit easier. All right, so get post by forum. So we'll re remove the exception here, and what we'll say is var posts is equal to our context. And now we're gonna actually grab from our forums and we'll say where and control period to bring in link. And we'll just say where the forum ID is equal to the ID that we passed this method dot dot first or default and then dot posts. Actually we could just safely call first here uh, since we only expect to get one object back and post is a property of course. So, so there we go. So we're actually looking now in our database um, via the forums DB set and then we're going to grab the forum ID that corresponds to the ID that we passed this method and then we're going to grab all of the posts off of that object. And so in fact, we can actually just return this. Okay, so we'll head back into our controller now. So we're actually getting all the posts back from our database. We also have a reference to the forum here as well. And so now the next thing we can do is actually build out our post listings. So they'll be equal to our posts, but again, we're going to select these into our new post listing model that we have here. So for each of those records that gets returned, we'll kind of map it into a post listing model. And we'll control period to bring in that new model that we just built a few minutes ago. And we'll start mapping the values. So we have a post ID, we'll have this post.user.id to map to the author ID property, same with the author rating. And we don't have a rating property on the user yet, we'll implement that here in just a minute. But we've got the title of the post, we've got the date it was posted, 
And if you recall, we actually stored this as a string so that I can kind of control the way that we display this down on the page. And we could actually pass string something to sort of format that date time nicely here. We'll look at that perhaps in a moment. And then our replies count should be post at replies .count. And then we need a reference to this forum. If you recall, this forum is a forum listing model. And so this is actually a complex object. And so what we're gonna do is actually just go ahead and build that in a separate method in our controller here. So I'm gonna set this equal to build forum listing for this particular post. Okay, so I'll control period on that to actually scaffold out that new method. And we can keep it a private method. It's just going to be implemented in uh, inside this controller, inside this actually uh, single method here. And so we'll fill that out in just a moment here. But the next thing I'd like to do is to add some properties on our user object here as well. Um, for instance, the rating and maybe like a profile image URL or something. So if we F12 on user, we get brought over to the post model and you can see that we have this virtual navigation property to our application user. So if we F12 there, we can see that currently application user is actually just a child class of this identity user base class, uh, which has some various different properties on it here, which itself is a child of this identity uh, user generic base class here. And so you can see all the various different things that a user has, for instance, an email, phone number, uh, username, this sort of thing. Um, what we're going to do is we're not going to worry about authentication or anything yet, but what we can do here is actually just continue to expand the definition of our application user directly in this application user class. So it'll have everything that our identity users have because it's inheriting from this base class, but it will also have the additional properties that we define here. So let's do that. We'll have an int rating for our user rating system. We'll have a, the ability to assign a profile image to a user, so we'll store the profile image URL. And maybe we have a date time object here to represent uh, when they were created. So we can say like member since, and we'll control period here on date time to bring in the uh, system namespace. And anything else here, maybe you had some custom user profile object or you could just actually define anything that you would put in a user profile on this user it might be um, an even better way to structure this if you just have simple user profiles. In our case, we, we will have pretty simple user profiles, so I'm just going to actually use the application user object here for our profile pages. But maybe you also have something like is active, this sort of thing. Anything you might think to actually manage your user entity models. Okay, so we're in the data layer here actually editing this application user class. And so what we wanna do is now run a migration on our database um, in order to actually populate the columns that we'll require for these new properties. So we'll head back to the package manager console here and we're gonna say add migration, update application user. Let's go ahead and fix the typo. Yep, and you can see our build failed because we kind of left our controller in a half-built state here. So in order to make it happy for now, though we'll need to actually finish this, we'll go ahead and return just an empty view for the time being and go ahead and build our solution to make sure that everything else is building. So it's kind of nice in a way that it forces you to make sure that your solution is building before you attempt to do something uh, like run a database migration. So I just hit up to run it again here. And you can see we're gonna run this new migration here with some new fields. So we can now just say update database. Okay, and so that's done. Okay, so now we'll head back over into our forum controller. So we just ran our database migration and we added the rating property to our user object. And now we can actually go ahead and fill out this build forum listing private method that's going to take an instance of a post and build out a new forum listing model from it.
And so what I'd like to do is we'll have this uh, forum on each of our post objects, of course, because each post belongs to a forum. So we'll have forum is equal to post.forum. And then we'll simply return a new forum listing model. And assign some of the properties that we'll, we'll need here. So we'll require the forum ID because the user will want to click on, say, the ID for the forum in order to actually visit the maybe the forum page from our post listing. The image URL. The name, so the forum.title and the description. Of the forum description, which may or may not be necessary to have a description. But we'll go ahead and include it. And I think I'd also like to be able to display the forum image URL. And so we need to go ahead and add that to our forum listing model. So I'm just hitting F12 here to actually navigate quickly. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. We can go ahead and close that. And this should populate now for us. Oops, and I think we called it forum image URL. All right. Um, we should just call it for, we should just probably call it image URL. And so I'm gonna rename that. So we're gonna go ahead and F12 here. And yeah, just name this image URL. Sorry about that. And so now I'll head back into our controller and yeah, just name this image URL. Okay, very good. So now we have this post listings, which is a set of posts that we'd like to display on our forum topic page. And just as we did before with our index page, we're gonna go ahead and build a view model specific to this topic page. Um, and so we'll head into our web project and then in models under forum I'm going to go ahead and add a new class and we'll just call it our forum topic model and I'll just clean this up so control period here okay and so we'll definitely use just a simple forum listing model here to kind of get the basic information about the forum, which we've already built a, a model for that in our forum listing model. And then we'll have a collection of post listings. So we'll have our post listing model here as well. So bring that in and we'll call these our posts. And we'll bring in our generic collections as well. So as you recall, when we just built out our post listing model, I also included the uh, forum image URL on them and some other information about the forum. And that's because I'm, I'd like to reuse this post listing model outside of the forum topic model as well. Um, use it on our homepage, for instance, where we have posts coming in from various different forums. Um, so we're kind of reusing this class in a few places, which is why some of the uh, some of the data on it may look redundant when it's inside certain contexts, for instance, this forum topic model. Okay, so that's all we need for now. This will actually grow when we add things like search to our application. Um, when we have search query, we need to pass on this model. But for now, this should suffice. So we'll head back into our forum controller. And we'll go ahead and use this as our view model for the topic action. So we can say var model is equal to new forum topic model. And our posts are equal to the post listings that we just built. And the particular forum is going to be equal to a forum listing model. And if you recall, we just built this method build forum listing that returns a forum listing model for a particular post. And I'd like to do the same thing here for a particular forum. So build forum listing forum and we'll just create a new overload for that method um, so we got the forum back from our forum service and that should be the one that corresponds to the ID of the topic that we're passing and so we just need to actually write a 
a new overload for this uh, build forum listing. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and copy this and we'll paste the new one here. We'll have this one take a forum. And then we can kind of do some very quick refactoring here. So what I'm gonna do is you can see that before we were grabbing a forum from a post here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just remove that. And then inside of our build forum listing where we pass a post, what I can do is actually here, just get rid of this. And now just call build forum listing with our other overload as well and just return that. So that keeps things a little bit neater here. So in either case, whether we have a forum or a post that we need to grab a forum from, we now have a method that will actually return the forum listing view model object um, corresponding to our entity model. Okay, and now we can simply pass the view, our new view model here. And I'm just gonna give us a little bit more screen space and so let's go ahead and create this, this view now. So we have this action topic where we're going to grab a forum that corresponds to the ID that we passed that topic. And we're going to get all the posts that are on this forum. Note that also we may have been able to simplify things here a little bit by um, just simply assigning posts to forum.posts. And so maybe we can do that. And that way we actually don't even need to implement um, our post service yet. And we'll definitely see other areas where we can actually refactor as we kind of build it out and add features and have more parts of the application talking to each other.